Welcome back, my ninjas. I'm having a great time. Today, we're going to be doing something very different. This is a DC Multiverse figure for the DC Multiverse Miniatures game that uh, started out as a Batman game, I believe. This is the Blue Beetle, which is a character I have to admit I am not super familiar with, except that I know he exists. So we're going to start with a little bit of Ethermatic Blue. We'll be moving on to Talisar Blue for the... Uh, other blue <laughs> that is blue beetle we'll be using yand and yellow for his goggles and we'll be using a contrast thinned down gillum and flesh for his skin tones oh and uh basilicanum gray for his gun it's a fairly straightforward thing we're using a medium sized brush not the larger brush we normally use we do want to let the ethermatic blue pool but we do need to make sure we have excellent control because the fine details on this figure and it's a smaller figure than we often find in the 40k fair we've been working with. So a little bit of ethermatic blue goes a long way, and we've already got those legs done. That's fantastic. So now it's time to work on the torso and arms, and there's a lot of detail work. The great thing is the Telesar blue is a darker blue. By going with the ethermatic blue first, I can be a little bit sloppy uh, around the chest iconography because I can't quite see it. But when I put the ethermatic blue down, it will puddle in the recesses and it will pull itself away from the edges, which means that when it comes time to paint the Talisar blue, um, I will be able to see that iconography on the, on the shoulders uh, and in fact can see it quite well. And so this technique of being able to slather it on uh, works great. Uh, the Ethermatic Blue also has the advantage of being a fairly light color to begin with, so uh, it, it uh, doesn't obscure and cover the detail in darkness and depth. So that's it for the Ethermatic Blue. We are going to let that dry. We're going to go into our little magic scene transition. There we go. Look at that. That's given us time to dry. And now we're pulling out Talisar Blue. And we're going to use that to go over the boots, the trunks, the gloves, and the headdress. Using a slightly smaller brush this time because I want to make sure to get those details. And of course, it's always a good practice to start with the contrast paints, laying the paint to begin with in a crease because you know it's going to be darker there. And don't forget to move your brush towards the creases where possible, uh, like on the trunks. Uh, I'm leaving the belt buckle open. I will be doing the belt buckle in the end in yellow, just like the uh, goggles when I get to those. So uh, Booster Gold is one of those underwear on the outside, except he's a boxer shorts kind of guy, not a briefs. Like most of the DC superheroes wear their briefs or uh, uh, bikini bottoms. He wears boxers and uh, or boxer briefs, perhaps, but his are on the on the outside as well. Uh, the little pouch, according to the official artwork that I showed at the beginning of the of the uh, the beginning of the film. I'm apparently a filmmaker now. The beginning of the film, uh, the pouch was blue, so I'm keeping the pouch blue. I would have considered maybe making it a different color, but uh, I'm replicating superhero costume artwork for a character I know nothing about, and so I don't have the luxury of deviating from the artwork. Uh, I do want to point out I am producing this model uh, for Patreon patron Jason. Thank you, Jason. I had actually a lot more fun painting this than I thought I would. Uh, they looked small and they didn't have a lot of detail on them and I thought that they were not going to be particularly exciting to paint, but it turns out it was really fun, really relaxing, a good chance to, to sit back and do something very different from my usual style. Uh, and I look forward to creating more things. If you continue with your patronage, uh, then you will have the opportunity to, to have more models uh, painted by me uh, and returned or filmed on the channel. They'll become videos. I get to say your name on YouTube. Um, so now we're doing the gloves and that's what's going on here. Pretty straightforward part of the process, really. And at this point, the figure is really starting to come together. Um, 
I do also find it interesting when parts of him were white with the ethermatic blue, he could almost have been an ice villain, like a, a, a Mr. Freeze or a Blizzard. I think Blizzard wears a, an outfit that's white and ethermatic blue. So uh, that was really interesting. And so going with the dark blue uh, trunks and I almost could have gone for a slightly darker blue, but I didn't feel like he's ultramarine blue. And I didn't feel like he's definitely not Leviathan blue, so maybe two layers of Talisar, but I think one layer works very well. So now it's time to get that uh, detail work around the shoulders and torso, and this is going to require some very, very detail work, so I am using a fine point brush. I'm making sure to load the brush up, though, so that I do get the contrast effect. Uh, on all the details on the chest. Superheroes have tremendous chest muscles and chest details, so I definitely wanted to emphasize all of that. It's very carefully following those lines and then going back in with the paint and darkening in uh, where, the, where the folds and the... the recesses. They're not folds so much as they're deep recesses uh, in the costume around the musculature of the hero. This is these strange beetle, beetle leg shapes, I guess, that Blue Beetle has coming around uh, his upper torso. Finish out that shoulder and then we'll get to the headdress. Blue Beetle has no hair, so we just have to worry about face and goggles. Unfortunately, poor framing at this point. You can't see me painting the cowl on the head. I really am going to work on my framing, I promise. Um, hopefully my new camera setup will help that. There we go. You can see what I'm doing on the head now. We're just going back and putting in a little bit more Talisar over where we've already gone just to make sure that it pools and, and covers the way it ought to in the recesses. Emphasizing the, the edges of things like the edges of the gloves, the folds in his trunks and, and parts of the headdress there. Make sure that's nice and smooth. And there's Booster Gold. Now we've given that an opportunity to dry, and we're going to come in with Eandon Yellow, and we're going to hit the orbs of his eyes, that his kind of beetle goggles, I guess. I don't know if they have a, a name. We want this to be good enough to provide the yellow color, but not so thick, A, that it goes everywhere, and B, that it turns orange on the eyes. Uh, and so I'm striking a balance here, and now we're just going to hit that belt buckle. Make sure we get it covered well. But again, striking a balance because we don't want it to turn orange in there, but we do want it to be colored.
Hello, ninjas. I want to thank you once again for joining us. I have a great time doing this. I want to spend a special thanks one more time to my patron, Jason, for providing this model. I had a great time working on it. Uh, if you would like to have a model worked on by me on the channel, check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash 7ninjas. Otherwise, don't forget to leave a like. Uh, a comment, a comment below would be fantastic. I love to read your comments. I love to know that we're interacting, you know? Um, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're enjoying it. Leave a comment, let me know what you'd like me to work on. I really have been enjoying this series. This has been a lot of fun for me. Uh, I want to thank you. Seven Ninjas, very glad to have you on board as part of our team. Let's us help you take your army from gray to great.